Uh, welcome all to our uh, first live webinar with the Saudi Breastfeeding Association um, uh, in celebration for, uh, of the World Breastfeeding Week. Uh, we will have uh, today four uh, speakers, uh, and we will start uh, with uh, Ms. Huda Hamami uh, talking about uh, the midwifery role for successful breastfeeding experience. Uh, she is the Secretary General of the Saudi Midwifery Group and Team Leader Midwife at uh, uh, King Abdul Aziz University as a Team Leader Midwife. And uh, she's a Tunisian midwife um, and Amani childbirth educator and doula. Uh, she's a member of breastfeeding committee as an instructor and part of Mother Baby Journey Hospital. Uh, so I welcome uh, Ms. Huda to start her presentation. Uh, if uh, you can share your screen, uh, Huda. Hello everyone, good afternoon all. Please, Tagrid, um, if you can hear me, you can give me the access to make screen uh, sharing. Yes, uh, I made your co-host. Oh yeah, okay. So, sorry, because I made you before and I don't know what's wrong. Now you can. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Sorry, just a second. I'm just adjusting the screen sharing. Is it clear the presentation for all? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. It's an absolute honor for me to be here today in front of your estimate audience. On the occasion of Breastfeeding Week, I'm glad that uh, we organized this live webinar in, co in collaboration with the Saudi Breastfeeding Association. Uh, my topic today, it will be midwifery role for the successful breastfeeding, how the midwife, uh, she's the first line with the patient, how she will have her role to make this uh, experience for uh, breastfeeding success. So uh, let us start. Who is the midwife? To many people still, we are uh, promoting midwifery, the meaning of midwives, but still there is many people, they really don't know uh, who's the really midwife. The World Health Organization defined midwifery as encompasses care of women during pregnancy, labor, and the postpartum period, as well as care of the newborn. It's include measures aimed uh, at preventing health problem in pregnancy, the detection of abnormal um, conditions, uh, the procurement of medical assistance when necessary, and the, ex uh, and the exertion of the emergency measurement. Until a few years ago, the birth of women in many countries continued to take place inside the home due to customs and traditions on the one hand. And because medicine, on the other hand, was not advanced to, to the degree that we know nowadays, especially in the rural area and the area that have not been reached by medical services, at that time, the midwife was the trust source for the family regarding matters of pregnancy and childbirth and her duties were not limited for delivery only, but to accompany mother during her a full journey of the pregnancy, postpartum care, breastfeeding, she was the trustful person since long time. Nowadays, the midwifery um, become a, a, scientific, uh, um, a scientific source and uh, they are healthcare provider with the certified to do their main role. So how this, uh, how the midwife, she can uh, um, help to have a successful breastfeeding. For all midwives, uh, it's started before birth. It's all about, for all pregnant ladies, it's important to be educated during the pregnancy for breastfeeding and to be convinced for the feeding plan for the new babies. 
The midwifery role started during the prenatal education classes to let the mother aware about the benefits of breastfeeding for both mother and baby. So as a midwife, when you have uh, during your clinic or your breastfeeding clinic, or even when you have uh, giving uh, uh, child perennial, perinatal education classes, you can discuss this plan for breastfeeding and let the patient aware, the mother aware, about the benefit of the breastfeeding for both mother and baby. Uh, two golden rules for the success uh, for the breastfeeding, it's in two parts. As I mentioned here, sorry. The first part it's for the uh, midwife. She can she will she will provide she will give the education resources, midwifery care uh, care plan, the breastfeeding community, the breastfeeding awareness, and mother baby friendly hospital. All of this part of the midwifery she can take in her shoulder to uh, give a successful perine uh, perinatal plan for breastfeeding, and also. The second part, it's also related to the mother. The mother, she wants to breastfeed. And the family, they need to be also aware and support breastfeeding. The most important uh, and the key master for the to success breastfeeding is the partner also. The partner need be aware and support breastfeeding. I think there is the uh, open mic. Um, Yeah. So, as I mentioned, the to to have to we uh, start the to having a successful breastfeeding uh, experience for the mother, the midwifery role it's a start with the education part, but also the mother she need to to know that uh, she has also a master role for that successful um, experience. So, what's the role of the midwif of the midwife during labor? During labor, the midwife, uh, she will be next to the patient and her role, it's my golden uh, role, is it all about natural birth. When will we have natural experience, natural birth? The mother, she has well educated during labor, during her pregnancy and during her labor. And she's open for all uh, her um, uh, her choices for labor, her partner aware, her psychologic uh, side, it's very comfortable and she know what she wants. The midwife, she need to encourage and to empower midwifery uh, patients um, and she need to advocate mother uh, choices. So how Can anyone hear me now? Okay. So uh, it's all about natural. How is this hormone at work? Natural oxytocin, uh, breastfeeding stimulate to, uh, stimulated the release of oxytocin from your brain. Oxytocin allow your body to get breast milk from your breast and it causes your uterus to shrink down after the birth of your baby. It's also foster love, nutritioning, and a strong emotional band between you and your child. So this is our master, Oxytocin. He's the guide, and if it's natural, it will, it will help more the brain to, uh, product, to produce the prolactin hormone to uh, help the mother to have a successful breastfeeding. And the opposite, Synthetic oxytocin and antrapartum oxytocin administration could inhibit first hour breastfeeding. This is the most problem thing. If we will have a patient and you as a midwife, you feel that it, and of course with coordination of the, your full team, that the patient, she don't, she don't need any uh, augmentation on any synthetic oxytocin because that it will affect the first hour breastfeeding.
A noble association was detected preg uh, pregnancy body mass index was an upper predictor of uh, impaired breastfeeding at three months, possibly confounding the oxytocin effect. So not only for the first hour, it will affect the mother for the full uh, breastfeeding experience later on for most, more than three months. And uh, this study, if the mother, she will have synthetic and augmentation, she don't give a full breastfeeding experience. And as a midwife, your role to uh, educate the patient to have a natural experience, to avoid any augmentation, unnecessary augmentation, and to let everything to, uh, during birth to be normal. Also, the most important thing during birth, maybe during labor, you can, uh, as a midwife, uh, tell the patient, tell the mother, what's the, uh, what's, what's the cholesterol. What's how you will let her be um, more convinced to give this golden milk to the baby. The cholesterol, it's very nutritional and uh, he's full of uh, antibodies and the proteins that fight infection, bacteria. Cholesterol promotes growth and health in infant and newborn. Uh, but, uh, but research show that taking bovine cholesterol supplements may be promote immunity help fight infections and uh, improve gut health through life. The master role of midwife, I believe it's in labor room. So how this, uh, just in the afterbirth, how the midwife, her role to have, uh, to uh, let the mother have a successful breastfeeding experience. It's in the three steps. First step, it's uh, the midwife role uh, to uh, promote and to let the baby skin to skin. It helps the baby to adjust uh, to life outside the womb and highly important for supporting mothers to initiative breastfeeding and to develop a close loving relationship with their baby. So skin to skin is very important in the first moment after delivery. Uh, the midwifery role is to promote that, to let the baby in the front, uh, skin to skin with the mother, and uh, that that point help more the mother to start breastfeeding and to have a successful breastfeeding experience later on. Also, for the uh, the next uh, the second step that the midwife she can do, it's the delaying cord clamping. With the delaying cord clamping allows the blood from the placenta to continue being transferred to the baby even after they are born. Uh, this means that the baby could receive up than 214 grams of cord blood, which is about 30% more blood than they would have without it. How this uh, help the breastfeeding? If we will have healthy baby, we will have more. Uh, um, uh, we will have more percentage of breastfeeding successful experience. So, if we will have promote skin to skin, delaying cord and clamp, and also the main um, step that the midwife she can do for this successful breastfeeding is the early initiative of breastfeeding. The gold for me, I I like to call her the golden hour. The, uh, how, uh, yani, the early initiation of breastfeeding and ensure that the infant receive the cholesterol, which is rich in protective factor. After the midwife, she, she finished the delivery, she finished the suturing, the baby is still in the chest of the mother. After uh, doing all of that, she can take the baby and uh, uh, initiative the breastfeeding. Initiative to set the baby uh, in the breast of the mother, she can assist her and she can, uh, in the same time, tell her about the benefit of the breastfeeding, how, as we mentioned before, the cholesterol, it's very, really important for you and for your baby, and for the full benefit of the breastfeeding for mother and baby. As a midwife, the most common question of according to breastfeeding I face, it's this top three. I don't have milk yet, most of the mother, they said, uh, haram, how I will put the baby in uh, my breast and still I don't have milk. The second one, they are really, um, uh, uh, they don't know if uh, it's enough my milk or uh, he, the baby, he's not stopping crying. 
why I will just give him the milk and I'm still, I don't have milk. And the, also the third the question is, for how long I will, breast, I will breastfeed my baby? As a midwife, you can uh, reassure them and you can give them the proper information. Like me, I always keep saying, it's a true, there is no milk yet for you. But when you first start breastfeeding your baby, your breast produce the cholesterol in small amount that gradually increase over the first few days. But after around two of, or four days, they start making much larger quantity for milk. So no panic. Don't say no, force her to breastfeed and let, tell her, give her the proper information. Tell her you are true. There is no milk yet. But your baby and if you will, you're giving more uh, milk, more uh, breastfeeding, the milk, it will come. This is the two rules, how the milk produce and how you as a midwife, you can conduct the mother to talk to her and give her, this is the two master rule to increase your milk. First, if you will increase the sucking for the baby, uh, the prolactin hormone, it will increase in your body. And after this, you will guarantee increasing amount of milk uh, started to produce in your breast. In addition of, if you will increase the fluid intake because 90% of the milk, it's water. If you will increase that uh, fluid intake, of course, you will guarantee more milk. So as a midwife, you need to tell the mother because they are really common say, I don't have milk. I don't have milk. How I will increase my milk? This is the only master to rule. The hormonal side with increasing second uh, sessions. And the second one, it's how to increase the fluid intake. If you will, full, uh, you will follow these two rules, these two master rule, you will guarantee that you have uh, enough milk for your baby. For this, if you will uh, enter a, a, formula flu, a formula milk with uh, your breastfeeding milk, of course, the, the second time it will be less, the prolactin hormone, it will be less, and you will not have enough milk for your baby. So it's really, uh, if you will, we need to convince mother, convince her like this way, so she can, st uh, she can uh, breastfeed and you can help her to guarantee a successful breastfeeding experience. Also for the first day, first hour after birth, as a midwife, they keep saying, I don't have enough milk for my baby. I love and I print this photo in all uh, our labor room so each mother she deliver and she give that question i will give her this photo first day uh, the size of your the, uh, the stomach of the newborn it's the size of cherry and it's like less than one spoon of uh, milk so even if you don't have milk the baby he will not cry of course the healthy baby a normal baby without any complications he will not need more than that amount uh, up and three days is still, uh, start, you start to increase your fluid, you start to increase the, sec, uh, the sucking time. So uh, automatically the milk, it will increase a little bit according to the stomach size uh, growing. Up to one week, the size it's like, uh, like almost an apricot. And for one month, it will not be more than one egg. So uh, as a midwife, you can reassure all your mothers after birth and tell her even uh, the, even you don't have milk, even you will have a small amount of milk, it's enough for your baby because the stomach size, it's really, really small and it's growing gradually according to the increasing uh, of milk uh, in your breast. So this is, you can uh, like this answer her and convince her and help her to have a breastfeeding a successful experience. Also, as a midwife, uh, when you put the baby and you start initiative the, um, the first hour after delivery, you, uh, you early, the early initiative of breastfeeding, you need to correct the position for the mother and give her the, the good instruction. As you see in the photo, sometimes uh, many mothers, they have like flat nipple or uh, they said, my nipple, it's too small. How I will breastfeed? I cannot breastfeed. 
um, my baby, he will be crying and my breast, it's not good for him. My main uh, answer, uh, the, I will convince all, we are not all the same. We are different, we have different size of, uh, we are different size for, uh, for body, different size of fingers, we are different size in our body, in our breast, it's normal. We are not all the same. If you have a baby, you have a breast, you can breastfeed, regardless your nipple size, even for your flat size. For breastfeeding and for successful breastfeeding as a midwife, you need to instruct your mother that the main concern for the breastfeeding, uh, it's not the nipple actually, it's the brownish around the nipple. So try to adjust her to help her to put uh, the correct latch on uh, between the mouth and the nipple and let her put the maximum of brownish area inside the mouth so we will guarantee a good correcting latching position and that uh, it will help her to have a breastfeeding and to continue breastfeeding after delivery. And also um, the most common question for how long I will breastfeed. During the newborn period, most breastfeeding sessions take 20 to 45 minutes. However, because newborn babies are often sleepy, the length of time may require patient and persistent feed on the first side until your, body, your baby stopped uh, sucking, hand, hands are not longer fisted, and your baby appears sleepy and relaxed. Also, many mothers, they will put the baby in the, the breast, they will start sucking for a while, like one or two minutes, the baby sleep, they will stop breastfeeding and they will uh, relax themselves. After two, three minutes, the baby will cry and it's like it will be like, like a circle, never ended. So for me, I try to convince my mothers during labor, after uh, delivery, I will tell them, please, give your baby a full session of breastfeeding and after that he can you can relax you can sleep and they can sleep so you as a midwife you need to, to give her um the correct time tell them at least for the first week or the first days give a full time of uh, breastfeeding for your baby once and also breastfeeding uh, it's not like a formula you are you need to, cal to calculate hours between each feeding time so it's in the in demand uh, for, uh, you can give them, you, you need to convince your mother to give a full time, a full session, let the baby, even if he, you look like sleepy, you need to stimulate the baby till they finish the full session, like between 20 to 45 minutes. After that, you can be relaxed, the baby, he can sleep, he can be fine, he will not disturb you, and it will be easier for you and for the baby. Now it's um, COVID time, and as a midwife, we are um, uh, in labor ward. For the delivery and for the COVID-19, you need you as a midwife, you are the first line to give the mother um, the good uh, information and the exact information about the breastfeeding and COVID-19. So I try to take like few uh, common question, the most asked question uh, with World Health Organization for breastfeeding and COVID-19. A transmission of active COVID-19 virus that can cause infection through breast milk and breastfeeding has not been detected today. There is no reason to avoid or to stop breastfeeding. So regardless the hospital that you are there as a midwife and maybe there is many uh, different protocols during nowadays you need to give the mother the information there is, that there is no reason to avoid or to stop breastfeeding if even if you are uh, covid positive the virus it will not go through your milk and you can still uh, breastfeed with your precaution wearing your mask uh, doing your hand hygiene and you can still breastfeeding The second question, uh, even with uh, COVID-19, still there is immediately skin to skin? According to World Health Organization, yes. Immediately and continued skin to skin care, including kangaroo mother care, improve the temperature control of the newborns and uh, is associated with improved survival among newborn babies. 
placing the newborn close to the mother also enable early initi initiation of breastfeeding, which also reduce mortality. So even so, during this COVID, uh, most of our mother, alhamdulillah, in, um, in uh, Riyadh nowadays, in our hospital, they are even, they are suspected, they are, uh, they, they are non-asymptomatic. Uh, so uh, you can still, as a midwife, give this uh, proper information to your mother and tell her it's fine even you are like suspected or they took swap for you you can uh, still have the skin to skin and you can take hold your baby and you can still breast feed your baby and community and in, in communities where covid 19 is prevalent should mother breastfeed according to welfare organization yes in all socioeconomic settings, breastfeeding improves survival and provides lifelong health and development advantages to newborns and infants. Breastfeeding also improves the health of mothers. So even we are with, in, uh, with during COVID-19 and it's difficult time for both midwives and mothers and all healthcare providers, breastfeeding, it's not an issue that please, we will stop because of this COVID all the guidelines and also MOH and the World Health Organization, they allow breastfeeding and you as a midwife, you need to advocate mother right and to give them the proper information and to encourage them even during COVID-19 to have a good uh, successful breastfeeding plan. As a midwife, it's not only uh, during uh, prenatal and during birth and after birth, still in postpartum, you as a midwife, you have a role for the breast, uh, breastfeeding experience, a successful story. After birth, as a midwife, you can continue to assist the mother for breastfeeding, help her in, uh, in the early uh, days till six weeks to adjust the baby to give her the good information, to observe how she's breastfeeding, to encourage her, to check if she has any problems like uh, related to her nettles, her situation, her psychologic situation. You can detect all of that as a midwife uh, and to help her, to give her the proper information and to be there for her to have a successful breastfeeding experience. As a midwife, you have a master role with the mother for the breastfeeding. And I'm really happy that nowadays uh, the midwifery is uh, growing in Saudi Arabia and the people still now, they start to know more about midwifery. And uh, she has a master role, I believe, for breastfeeding su successful plan. So uh, thank you for today. If there is any question, please. Uh, thank you very much, Hoda, for the great uh, speak, uh, speech about uh, a midwifery role in uh, successful breastfeeding. Um, uh, we have uh, uh, less than five minutes to ask a question for Ms. Hoda. If you can write it uh, in the um, chatting area so, we, uh, so she can answer it. There is a question, uh, Ms. Huda. Is there a phone line in the hospital for mothers to call uh, if they are having problem after discharge? Actually, I'm a team leader midwife in King Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz University Hospital. Uh, we have ED. It's open and accessible, accessible for all mothers. Post me, as a midwife, I work in emergency department and in labor ward. In postpartum area, 
we have like a team, a breastfeeding team, and also we have a breastfeeding committee in our hospital. We try our best to give the full uh, information and to uh, have the updated guidelines for with the infection control team. They, we have a great work actually with all our staff. But uh, if they have, we have the phone, I don't think so actually. But uh, we have before a breastfeeding clinic. I think now also it's like, uh, you know, in every where there is like um, restriction for the appointments, but still in ED, uh, as a midwife, we, the, we have uh, a good work with the um, uh, consultant pedia. And if they have any issue for breastfeeding of, or they feel that the mother, she really need a midwifery consultation for breastfeeding, still we are helping and, and we do that role. And also in labor world, uh, we give our mother the full information, the support for the breastfeeding. And still, we are working to update our guidelines regarding these points. Okay. Um, uh, Dr. Samah said, uh, thanks a lot, Hoda. May Allah bless you. It's written that some people may give bovine colostrum. Is that true? There is uh, some lectures and some researchers that they do that, but actually here we don't do that, <laughs> to be uh, clear. I don't see it, but uh, there is uh, some researches and some articles that provide this information. Okay. Any other question or we can go to the second uh, speaker? Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Huda. Uh, we will go for uh, Mr. Gharid. Um, thank you, thank you all. Thank you for attending. Thank you, Huda. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, we have the speaker, um, Mr. Gharid Hausawi. Um, just a minute, please. Okay, uh, she will talk today about um, <clears throat> the breastfeeding uh, for a healthier planet, how to achieve it with the optimum clinical care providing. Uh, Ms. Tagreed Hausawi, she's the head of scientific committee at the Saudi Midwifery Group, and she uh, is a, a Saudi nurse graduate from nursing school and have a master's degree in nursing and midwifery advanced practice. She worked in labor ro uh, room, uh, in military hospital and became an IBCLC since 2016. She's working now in King Faisal Specialist Hospital Research Center in Jeddah in labor room uh, until now. She's the co-chairperson of breastfeeding committee at King Faisal Specialist Hospital Research Center. Uh, she is International Baby Food Action Network uh, as an ad advocate for breastfeeding Arab region. Uh, recently, she joined Amani Birth Family, and she is instructor of uh, TOT breastfeeding workshop. So we welcome uh, Ms. Tagreed uh, to uh, start her um, presentation. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, um, Good evening, everyone, and thank you for all who's joining. Um, my talk today, um, I'm talking about breastfeeding, okay? Uh, we used to talk about the benefit of breastfeeding, but today I'm taking the opportunity, we are celebrating the week of, the week of uh, uh, World Breastfeeding Week in Saudi Arabia. So uh, I will just highlight uh, generally in the beginning, uh, I make it a mode of celebration, okay? Uh, we'll talk generally about the globe, global strategies for breastfeeding. Then we'll see how, how we can, what we can do as healthcare providers, all of us physicians, pediatricians, uh, nurses, midwives, what can we do for breastfeeding to make it successful and as much as we can. So the content will be mainly for breastfeeding sustainable development. Uh, 
uh, benefits or can everyone see the screen is it clear ya Ru'a? yes it's clear okay benefits of breastfeeding for the mother and diet uh, benefit of the breastfeeding for society and uh, planet uh, then I, I will talk about a little bit about what is our the role of healthcare provider since we are celebrating and we want uh, the theme this year is for healthier planet then i will just give a message for all of us as the who are direct care with mother and babies what can we do uh, to help in uh, making this a norm or like a successful practice Okay, let me take you uh, about the sh a little bit of how, how this celebration came. Uh, in 2000, uh, 2005 or 15, 2015, uh, they meet in uh, WHO. They, uh, they found that they didn't reach their uh, target uh, percentage of uh, achieving breastfeeding. Even if they achieve it in the, uh, um, in the first two days, then it will fall by six months of age. So they make a lot of committees, a lot of meetings to, to see or, or to root cause analysis, what is the um, uh, problems might be. And what is the really main effect on the planet for uh, not having a breastfeeding. So let me take you the, their website is WABA. Uh, we, this is where the website is a Malaysian, based in Malaysia. Uh, they used to meet uh, and uh, to encourage a celebration of the breastfeeding, it falls in first uh, to 7th of August every year, but it depends on the countries. Uh, some of the countries, they make it in uh, uh, in October. Some of the countries, they make it in, uh, it's up to the country. So uh, I'll just take you this to this website. Uh, there, uh, you can have a time after that or any time who, the one who is really uh, promoting breastfeeding or advocate for breastfeeding to see the website. It's very comprehensive. For example, this is the first goal. Uh, this is, uh, they make it a goal first, no poverty. Then they make the, what is the strategy to achieve this goal, which is, for example, breastfeeding is a natural and low cost way of feeding babies and children. It is affordable to everyone and does not burden household budget compared. Yani they are talking about it in the first goal. Then when they come to the uh, second goal, the goal is end hunger, achieve food security. The strategy to achieve that is uh, at exclusive breastfeeding and continued breastfeeding for two years of age uh, and so on. Uh, you can see it's like uh, 17 and each has a goal and a strategy to follow. Uh, I'll go back to the, my presentation. Okay, sorry. Now, I make it, they make it also a leaflet here. They make the goals in here, for example, goal one, and this is the strategy. Of course, this is small, you cannot read it. Uh, but if you go to the website, you can see it clearly. They make it everyone uh, uh, separate. So uh, the, since they meet this year, they make this one. And uh, from that year, we are working very hard, all the breastfeeding, and when I say we, all the breastfeeding uh, advocates around the, the world that they feel that the breastfeeding is really the normal and uh, basic practice that every newborn and mother has to have it. Uh, we are working very hard glo uh, globally uh, on the society base, hospital base, and now we have to make it very condensed and comprehensive on the individual ways. Uh, when I talk about individual, we are talking about the couples, uh, the people, families around you in the house. Okay. Now, um, because I'm admitting also people, the screen is coming late. Uh, benefit of breastfeeding, I, I, I used to take, because we are talking about all the health care provider. This slide, I took it from uh, American Congress of Obstetric and Gynecology. They're also highlighting, they start to realize the uh, importance of breastfeeding. So for moms, for example, they make breastfeeding burns as many uh, uh, as 500 extra calories. So for, for the woman who's really uh, watching for their weight, it's also a key. When uh, who are uh, women who are breastfeeding longer have lower rates of type two diabetes, and it's proven by the uh, qualitative and quantitative studies. 
when who, women who breastfeed uh, has lower rates of breast cancer and also ovarian cancer, breastfeeding triggers uh, the release of oxytocin, that it, which is the love hormone, make the, all the uh, blood after the um, pre uh, period is very uh, quickly and smoothly. Uh, contracting the uterus, decrease the amount of bleeding that you have it. For babies, of course, uh, breast milk, I'm just giving you example because uh, I, I have a very good examples of the uh, organization around the world who are really working very hard to achieve breastfeeding and to make it more for the, for the societies. Breast milk has the right, the right amount of fat, sugar. Um, breast milk is easier to digest than formula. Uh, let me take you to another slide from, uh, this is from uh, Reliant Medical Group for mom. See here what they're, uh, regarding the way, regardless the way, this, uh, the, the last one is reduce the risk of postpartum depression, okay? Uh, creates a unique bonding experience for a mom and baby. For babies, uh, for example, they, uh, the highlight antibodies, in the breast milk help uh, babies fight off vir viruses, bacteria, and when we talk about viruses, we, uh, it will come out of our mind, the uh, COVID-19. Children who wear breastfed as babies have lower risk of developing ear infection. That's uh, um, to decrease otitis media, for example. This is another uh, uh, organization called Victor, Six, Victor Stock. It's mainly for moms. Uh, breastfeeding have better sleep patterns. Uh, that means you, you will sleep enough. Breastfeeding uh, may put uh, the pause in menopause. <laughs> this is very important for all of us. Faster loss of pregnancy weight. Breastfeed mother, uh, moms have money, save money, uh, uh, a lot of it. Okay. See how they make it really uh, very nice and cozy and fashionable to breastfeed. Moms who, who quit smoking during pregnancy have a decreased risk of picking up that bad habit. Uh, so for health as well, they're talking it about health. Lactation provides uh, contraception protection, and we all know that. Okay. Now, breastfeeding, uh, breastfeeding milk. I use always to go to the basic. We are talking about the breast milk. So what is in the breast milk might make a... Uh, all of the countries and strategies talk about it. Milk has water, proteins, lactose, essential fatty acids, antibodies, long chain uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, vitamins and minerals. And we have to put an uh, un underline here hormones and growth factor, which is they will, they will never have it in the formula, no matter how they do, hormones, enzymes, and growth factors. Antibacterial, antivital enzymes, viral enzymes, Stem cells, which is really, they discovered recently that the, the, there are quite uh, a very huge number of the stem cells in the breast milk, especially the first milk. Breast, uh, breast specific macrophages, uh, and it's only, when we say spe breast specific, it's only there for that special diet, mother and baby, for their own. If the mother having a special disease, she got that disease during pregnancy, her body will develop the immunity system for that. So the baby will definitely get uh, the benefit from that milk. As many as 800 strains of bacteria. That's human milk, which always make me amazed about this slide, the coming slide, if you can see it. I, I'm really in awe of, who, of the person who uh, first put this slide out. This is a drop in your uh, left hand, a drop of a formula. And this is a drop of um, human milk. This is what I'm, try I'm trying to say in the previous slide, that no matter how they do, no matter, it will never be the same. And this is approved with the under, uh, under mic microscope uh, screen of the um, breast, uh, breast milk and formula. Okay. Now, for the globe, for the society, for the community, what is the benefit? This was uh, out uh, 2016, I think, and it's really nice showing. I make this slide today as a uh, like a celebration mood. That's why it's all picture and photos to attract the and to make us like feel pleasure about breastfeeding and how is breastfeeding is something it's really very cute, uh, cool and um, very crucial. 
benefit of breastfeeding, you can see uh, the perfect nutrition. It um, nothing but breast milk uh, will. Um, it's a best start for the human being. It's a protection for the baby. Here, for uh, it support paid leave. This is the one. What is the society will be gained, will be gaining from the breast breastfeeding. Limit formula marketing, uh, and this is we are talking about uh, countries' strategies. Strengthen health system. Of course, if we develop a early uh, as early immunization system in the uh, newborns, uh, it will we will create a healthy generation. It will be put more, a small burden on the health systems. Nobody will be getting uh, a lot of diseases. Uh, only the regular diseases, flu or so support mothers. This is the one that we will gain. It's because if we make a connect, a connect in the during in, in the community, we will have a very good uh, network about the. So it plays a, a several role. This one. Next one is here. Only statistics is is done by the WHO. Uh, globally, there were 155 million children under years of five years of age. Um, stunt. This one, um, they, I put it here because lead us what why they put uh, all this strategy where the, why they make all the uh, this celebration breastfeeding week around the world encouraging. It will save health wise. It will save country. It's the, the green. Uh, see how how we how it will make um, difference in the environment if we just adhere to simple thing like uh, that everyone is saying is a some simple thing and it's very basic. Okay, it's all in the website. You can see it uh, later on. Uh, this uh, I will also take the opportunity to talk about. Of course, uh, Ms. Huda already mentioned it, but uh, the latest evidence since COVID-19 is something really new. Uh, COVID-19, uh, all the evidence now till now till this date, saying that uh, women can breastfeed with these uh, precautions. So it's also helpful in such the pandemic when we breastfeed. It's um, women will be less fearful about their babies and their health and their uh, uh, contact. Clinical practices. Okay. Uh, American Academy of Pediatrics believes that breastfeeding is the optimal source of nutrition. World Health Organization, uh, this is the phrase I quoted from them, exclusive breastfeeding is recommended up to 68 months of age and preferable to uh, uh, two years. So virtually all mothers can breastfeed provided they have accurate information. Let's highlight this accurate information and the support of their family, healthcare system, and society. So it's a, a, a not a one-man one job. It's all the society job. It's our responsibility to make it easy for them rather than, than judging them or forcing them or convincing them. Okay. So breastfeeding is a gateway solution, actually. Now, uh, what can we do? Uh, apply, uh, apply and encourage breastfeeding friendly environments within the community. I'm talking about hospitals, when you go to social meetings, outside in the malls, make it uh, very normal to see one woman breastfeeding in the airport or in the mall or in the mosque. It's sometimes I feel it's in the community or the society. Back to uh, breastfeeding basics, as she mentioned, Ms. Huda, Cholesterol initiation, skin to skin, uh, highlighting the importance of women education, antenatal education, postpartum support, uh, um, network, community network, mother to mother uh, support groups, it's all. Then uh, adhering to the International Code of Marketing, which is really something bigger on the uh, uh, hospitals. Provide multidisciplinary care as required. When I talk about this, it means, of course, we have some tertiary hospitals with the with the um, special needs babies, uh, we have to accommodate uh, as much as possible. Uh, even if you have to provide only the milk or express milk or separation in the early days, or mother with HIV, we know that in Saudi Arabia we still uh, uh, considering the breastfeeding uh, is contraindicated. Yeah, uh, it's a case to case basis, but most of our hospital is like public. Um, um, women can breastfeed, and except for the tertiary. Pediatrician, uh, neonatologist, uh, um, OB-GYN, 
nurses, midwives should sing the same song about breastfeeding. So all the women will be like uh, convinced and have self-confidence about the uh, breastfeeding and themselves. Apply mother-friendly hospital as much as we can. Of course, it depends on the hospital uh, nature or a hospital strategy or hospital uh, IPPs. Okay. Uh, I like this, uh, you know, I, I went through a lot of organization. This is uh, Jefferson County Public Health in Colorado. They, uh, they have this action plan, which I really I like it. Uh, milk, they make it as milk, mother support. So breastfeeding support will be in mainly in these four things. Mother uh, support, validate mother's feeling. Of course, we have to address. First, we have to approach her. Of course, we are not forcing. We are just encouraging. Involve a specialist. Contact IBCLC if the one who you know. Or uh, ELCA, they have a list. If you go to this website, you have a list globally saying who is IBCLC in which country. Uh, recently, alhamdulillah, I need to really be proud of this uh, um, Saudi, uh, Saudi Breastfeeding Association. Uh, I think Dr. Noura uh, will really talk about it more. Uh, please try to join the website and see what is the activities. It's, uh, it's initiated uh, this year, uh, uh, late in 2019, I think, if I'm not mistaken. It's uh, really we're doing, uh, we are trying to do a lot of work with the lead of uh, our very uh, qualified and special cons uh, specialized consultant and IBCLCs. Uh, just uh, have an uh, idea about this so you can you know how to, who to refer in Saudi Arabia. Long-term impact, feeding as development, celebrate small steps. Any achievement with the mother, uh, it should be celebrated. You have to praise her, uh, encourage her. If you can give her photos or have a photos with the babies, see the uh, effect. Uh, uh, like uh, development of the year, uh, take photos for the baby in different ages and the effect of breastfeeding on that baby. Connect moms, that's what I'm talking to, to have a social network between moms because mother have very good impact on other mothers, especially in our society. Okay, so uh, my message is supporting breastfeeding for a healthier planet is everyone's role. Uh, even you, if you see your kids at home, they will be affected. When you see you breastfeeding, it will be embedded in their mind that this is the, 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 the norm. So it's everyone's. And breastfeeding is the mother's gift to herself, her baby, and her, uh, earth, her, uh, the earth. And she should really be proud of it. We should really be proud that uh, mother is breastfeeding their babies. We give them the, uh, the credit and praise, it, praise them for that. And that's it. Any questions? I'm ready to answer. <clears throat> Hello. Thank you, uh, Mr. Reed, for the uh, great presentation. Uh, we are going to uh, receive the uh, the question in the chat area, and then uh, Mr. Reed can answer them. Uh, they're asking here a uh, question. Can I read it, Roa? Um, with uh, HIV mothers, it, it, is it safe with an unpredictable uh, viral load? Wallahi, I can see if the regime in uh, the regime in, in the, the the way of uh, our consultant, for example, let's say in our hospital, most of the time they don't allow it. But I have, in my experience, one or two cases. They measure the viral load and uh, they see the experience of the mother history. 
that she had uh, four babies or three babies before and breastfeed them uh, with this viral load. So they allow her after a lot of multidisciplinary meetings uh, about this mother, specific mother. So, and at the end, uh, they, uh, her willingness, she really wants to breastfeed. Uh, so I, they come up with a solution that this mother can breastfeed. Otherwise, we are really adhering to the uh, Saudi law about uh, HIV mothers with the breastfeeding. Dr. Manal is asking something. You, maybe you can answer here. Okay. Um, is there a written policy about the role of midwife and breastfeeding practices? Um, yes, I think we have uh, the um, uh, midwife uh, guidebook uh, that is uh, published by the Ministry of Health that has all the competency and uh, scope of practice for midwives and that include breastfeeding practices. But it's not a policy, it's um, mainly a guidebook for uh, midwives. I think that's all for me. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have, um, let me share the screen. Okay. Um, we have uh, the third speaker, uh, Dr. Maaz. Uh, uh, we'll talk about the immunity of breastfeeding. Uh, Dr. Maad, he stopped sharing his screen. So uh, immunity of the breastfeeding, he is um, an, a pediatric consultant. Uh, he, he graduated from Faculty of Medicine, King Saud University in Riyadh, 1995, and then uh, did the pediatric residency training at King Abdelaziz Medical City National Guard in Riyadh for four years. Uh, he has the Jordanian Board in General Pediatrics uh, in 2000 and Saudi Board in General Pediatric in 2001. Uh, he has fellowship in pediatric gastroenterology uh, and nutrition uh, from King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center. Uh, and the Saudi Board in Pediatric Gastroenterology and Nutrition. Uh, Dr. Turkey has um, the um, Clinical Fellowship in Pediatric Hepatology and Liver Transplant at University of Alberta, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. He joined King Salman Hospital in 2007 as a consultant of pediatrics and pediatric gastroenterology and then appointed as chair man of pediatric department in June 2013. He is a clinical assistant professor of pediatric uh, in the College of Medicine, King Saudi University Riyadh, worked in different hospitals such as King Fahad Medical City and Prince Sultan Medical Military City. Uh, he's secretary general of the Saudi Pediatric Association and board member of uh, SASPGHAN. Uh, appointed as president of the Saudi Society of Pediatric Gastroenterology, Hepatology, and Nutrition. Uh, he is interested in the field of pediatric nutrition and gastroenterology. Um, uh, so um, we welcome uh, Dr. Uh, Maag to speak about the immunity of breast milk. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Roha for uh, your I mean, introduction for me. Uh, it is my pleasure to be with you uh, today with the Saudi Midwifery Group 
with chapter of uh, the Saudi uh, Association for uh, Obstetric and Gynecology. Uh, really, I'm uh, happy and so proud with the uh, previous speakers, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Huda Hamami and Ms. Taghreed. Uh, really, I'm glad and happy to, to join you tonight for this uh, activity which belong to the uh, World uh, Breastfeeding uh, Week 2020. Uh, I'm uh, representing the uh, Saudi uh, Breastfeeding Association, as Mr. Tagreed mentioned. Uh, it has been established recently in 2020, uh, and even with this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we could manage that to also uh, celebrate uh, the first week of August with the international, uh, I mean, uh, World uh, uh, Breast Feeding Week. Uh, I think uh, what we have to we'll talk today about the breast milk. Uh, and uh, maybe uh, Ms. Tagirit, you mentioned some information about that one. We'll talk quick about breast milk and composition and uh, what I mean, uh, components that make the breast milk is, is more having more immunity. As we know that it's a unique complex uh, with different composition is most important uh, and the great nutrition for the first six, first six months of life as uh, I mean, recommended by the WHO to have exclusive breastfeeding in the first six months of life. And also same thing for American Academy of Pediatrics between four to six months uh, of life. As we know, the breast milk is, uh, has a lot of nutrition and also components that, uh, I mean, uh, leukocyte enzymes that will help in the immune system of the baby. And uh, that also uh, fluid and components will be also important for the growth and maturation of the uh, babies. Uh, those pictures that show that cow milk is for cows and horse for horse, Garaps for garaps and elephant for elephant. For human, we have to have a human milk. This is one study uh, in the Asir region by our colleague, uh, Professor Ben Ali. Uh, he did this uh, study regarding the exclusive breastfeeding among the uh, teachers. Uh, actually, uh, in the uh, elementary uh, intermediate school, uh, who's uh, having exclusive breastfeeding in the first six months of life, it's only 8%. It's very low, uh, honestly, that we have breastfeeding in, in Saudi Arabia in general. We don't have a uh, uh, big study, just this is limited to one region. But uh, as we know, as we noticed during our practice, we don't have, uh, I mean, more uh, ladies of breastfeeding. This is one of the aims of the Saudi Breastfeeding Association with the collaboration of our colleagues in different societies, such as the Saudi uh, midwifer uh, group, uh, that to support and encourage the breastfeeding in Saudi Arabia, inshallah, in our society and community. Uh, the types of breast milk, as you know, that the colostrum or laba, the first stage of breast milk, uh, the first week uh, uh, of uh, life, and it is yellowish uh, creamy colored, it's thick, it's very important that it contains antibodies, uh, which uh, give protection for the newborn, uh, newborn, and also contains vitamins and minerals, but it's low in fat. Then we have the transitional milk for another two weeks uh, that contains high level of fat and lactose and vitamins, and uh, more than colostrum, and also has vitamins as well. Then we have the mature milk. Mature milk. Uh, uh, this is uh, usually after the second week of life and uh, throughout the lactation. And uh, the water, I mean, 90% of the mature milk contains water. And this is very important uh, question we have uh, asked by mothers regarding, shall I give my baby water? No, uh, breast milk is, contains enough water, no need to give water uh, for your baby. Just encourage breastfeeding and breastfeeding especially in the first six months of life. And other 10% uh, contains carbohydrate, protein, and other components. The, the milk itself, the four milk, the first milk produced uh, by the mother, uh, this is, contains mainly water and vitamins, and the hind milk contains rich in lipids and carbohydrates. And this is uh, 
picture shows difference between the colostrum and mature milk, mainly, uh, you know, in the colostrum, as you know, the uh, immune, immune components like secretory IgA and lactoferrin, they are more than the mature milk. And this is why we have to encourage uh, to give breast milk. And as you know now, the new recommendation, the recent years, you know, maybe a few years back, we have, we call it lab. Yani when the when the mother, she, she deliver her baby, you have to, uh, give the baby to her to her in the delivery room skin to skin uh, touch you know uh, this is uh, one of the goals or one of the i mean steps that or 10 steps to get the baby friendly hospitals to i mean apply that one and also we have as you know the kangaroo uh, all of these you know uh, i mean uh, now uh, tools or this you know uh, i mean um, uh, applications that 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 uh, to support and to help to encourage more breast milk when the mother she delivered in the delivery room she hold her baby and skin to skin and the smell also of the mother to her baby will be will be i mean helping more uh, for breast milk and uh, this is very important that first week of life to give the colostrum because it contains high components of uh, i mean uh, immunity components what kind of the physical properties? It is white appearance and the pH 6 to 0.6 to 6, it's alkaline actually. And the volume, this is a question of the mothers. My breast is not enough. No, it's enough. When, you, when the mother, she give more breast milk, she will, I mean, the half and more and more up to 1.5 liter per day. And what's the advantage of the human milk, as you know, is most effective as dietary, I mean, intervention. And it's prevent from the infection and morbidity and decrease risk of atopy. Uh, also, the other advantage is that uh, breast milk also primary source for nutrition, especially, you know, with the expensive of the, the bottle milk, and we have to encourage, uh, I mean, to give more, more breast milk. And also, in uh, breast milk, in some studies, the burden of, of deaths of mothers and children, if we encourage breast milk, that will save at least $100 billion. This is the diagram shows the components and yani make it maybe easier. What kind of uh, of components? As you know, the lactose is mainly with the lactose. Uh, you know, uh, the, it contains. Uh, I mean, uh, many things and has also uh, some. I mean, uh, function like energy, uh, the fat and long chain bully and fatty acid or whether they call it SIBOFA, they important in brain immunity uh, and energy, the prebiotics, which they talk about for the last 10 years, maybe or more than 10 years, microbiota, immunity, gut health, and routine for the growth and immunity. And also, as you know, even the uh, vision as well and cognition. So the, the, the functional components, uh, the uh, immunological factors like uh, secretory IgA, lactoferrin, SIBOFA, uh, hormones and growth, as Mr. Tagrid mentioned, human milk oligosaccharide, uh, all and beneficial bacteria, and the new things as uh, mentioned as stem cells now, nucleotides as well. All of these components are uh, important in the in the in the human milk and cannot be cannot be available in the bottle. Whatever, whatever, the 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 factories, the companies trying to mimicking the breast milk. They could not reach the breast milk component at all. Other components, lipids, 98% uh, is triglyceride. The main thing is the short chain triglyceride. They call it GOS. The, when, when we talk about that later on, but this is they, every year or every five years, they discover new thing in the breast milk. You know, they try to mimic that one, but they could not make that one. Uh, SubhanAllah, yani, uh, the, even, even the ratio between the short chain and the long chain fatty acid yani in the breast milk is, is different from any any form. It's nine to one, and that uh, help more in, uh, in in supporting the growth and the cognition and the vision. Yani another will marry will will tafkir al is better because the short chain to long chain nine to one and and, and the breast milk which is gift of uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala of our God. Lactose is the main carbohydrate, as we know, it's 70 gram per liter. And protein in the milk, in the breast milk, we have the whey protein is, is more, uh, whey protein 
is the easier one and that easy di 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 digestible one uh, compared to the casein, uh, which is more in the cow's milk, you know. This is why we have to encourage the, the breast milk even for the protein, uh, the way protein is, is uh, I mean, not that heavy or that, uh, I mean, has any load in the small bowel of the uh, newborn. Different enzyme also, there are different enzyme uh, and, uh, in, the, in the breast milk, they are uh, helping in synthesis of milk, uh, mammary gland. Uh, this is now, uh, in general, talking about those, uh, I mean, components of the macronutrients and the micronutrients of the breast milk uh, uh, that is, as mentioned, a gift of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala of God, which no one, um, I mean, uh, formula can mimicking, or uh, I mean, near to the uh, breast milk. Now, this is this is interesting. Uh, I mean, diagram. This is from Alan Walker. Uh, he has an article, good uh, called I mean, breast milk is the gold standard for the immunity. Uh, here, this is the fetus, Janine fi batn Ummah, and this is the newborn after start breast uh, milk, you know. Uh, if we notice the fetus has no, I mean, cell enzyme activity, the mucosa is, uh, is not that heavy, the lamina proberia, and the secretory IgA, and the, and the muscle wall, all are yani, deficient, but they become more in the breast milk, not in the bottom milk. This is why we have to encourage why we have, you know, we are working as a one team with our colleague in the ob in the delivery room, our colleague, the midwives, the nurses, you know, to, to support the mother. Ya Ummi, take your baby, shili tiflik, try you to give fit and a ta'bana. Okay, Ummi, radda'i ibnik, start, khali ala sadrik, skin to skin, khali shimmik, khali shimmil sadrik, to start feeding as, as early as possible, especially the colostrum, that contains a lot of a lot of uh, secretory IJ and immune component that will help to build the mucosa of the small bowel for the uh, newborn. Same thing here, you know. It's more, you know, this is big cholesterol, post cholesterol. Yani after starting the feeding, بعد ما رضع رضع الأسبوع الأولاني, how is the crypts? هاي طبعاً when we talk like small bowel, نأخذ مقطع من small bowel, the crypts and the villi is deficient, but when they start breastfeeding, become more, and that help to, to, to prevent and to protect our babies. Even the, the preterm, as our, our colleague, our nurses and our neurologists, they know they are, we are suffering from the neck, the necrotizing intercolitis, which, which you know, quite common in the, in the, in the premature uh, babies. And as we know, the treatment is the, or the preventive is the breast milk not to give uh, bottle milk to prevent neck uh, for our premature babies or preterm babies. What are the immunoglobulins in, uh, uh, in the breast milk? Uh, more than 30 components have been identified. Uh, 12 of them, they are exclusive in the breast milk. The main one is the secretory IgA is the most important. 90% is contains, I mean, uh, I mean uh, considered as 90% of all immunoglobulins and it is high in the cholesterol and stimulate the GI production uh, of immunoglobulin. Uh, so security IJ is very important. All the newborn, they are born without that one, but when they start to have breast milk, they uh, will have the secretory IgA, and that one will help to produce more immunoglobulins. This diagram showed that uh, immunoglobulins, the IgD, as we know that, uh, uh, I mean, from the mother, through the placenta will be, uh, I mean, uh, initially in the babies. Then after that, the IgM will, will the first one will be appear. Then after that, uh, I mean, IgA and IgM. And uh, with the time, they may be at the age of six months, they start uh, to have the immunoglobulins. Otherwise, initially, they depend on their mother, IgG only. Uh, as we mentioned, this is the just uh, same thing we mentioned that one. The security IG antibodies uh, pass into the infant digestive tract in the mother's milk, and they uh, uh, remains active and they protect the digestive tract as we mentioned. And uh, also, they are not, I mean, absorbed in the infant circulation. 
and not digested by the uh, infant, uh, I mean, uh, enzyme. Uh, the, 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 the mechanism of the secretory IgA production is controlled by hormones uh, produced in the pregnancy in the third trimester mainly, mediated by T helper, uh, I mean, uh, cells and cytokines. And also uh, the media, the, I mean, uh, the, the control of that one, that some of, of uh, cytokines or interleukin number eight, which is the one uh, can cause neck and preterm infant. Uh, when we have uh, breast milk for the preterm babies uh, with the secretory, IG, secretory IgA, and that can down regulate the uh, interleukin number eight, will decrease the incidence of neck. More than 90% uh, secretory IgA of immunoglobulins in the human uh, colostrum and milk. Uh, as we mentioned, the net has no uh, at birth, no one from IJ at birth. 100% uh, of adult level will be the first six months of life. As we mentioned, cow milk has no I secretary IGA. Uh, what about lactoferrin? Lactoferrin is, uh, is a whey glycoprotein or protein, it's a whey, whey protein. It is binding the irons, and uh, most of the iron are unsaturated. And uh, it uh, assists in the transport of diet of the iron. And as we know that, unfortunately, and we, we have, especially in Saudi Arabia, there are a lot of studies in our uh, mothers, whose uh, pregnant mothers, they have, they have uh, deficiency of iron, uh, and that will, uh, even they have storage of that uh, iron, will might affect the their babies, though also it's, it's important to encourage the pregnant ladies uh, to, to ingest more iron, to have their own iron level is high, because that might help to increase the lactoferrin, and lactoferrin can work uh, properly, and their babies will have more immunity, as lactoferrin was the, one of the components that help in the immunity. Uh, lysozymes also is important. They are also largely quantity in the colostrum, and they are uh, also visit long time, and they are protected by the uh, I mean uh, enzymes of the small bowel. This is the table shows that difference between human and cow uh, milk. The human uh, milk contains more uh, more than hundred uh, I mean uh, secretory IJ compared to the cow's milk and also more lactoferrin and more lysozyme. The most three important, the security IgA, lactoferrin and lysozymes are that important. This is 100, you know, uh, I mean, milligram and 100 ml of human milk compared to 100 ml of cow's milk. What about leukocyte in human milk? High level is the early phase of lactation. Usually decrease after uh, second, third month of life and they are neutrophils and macrophage and uh, they are also in the cholesterol more than 100,000 to 5 million leukocytes per ml, mainly polymorphs, and mature milk contains 100,000 leukocytes. Lymphocytes up to 10%, T-cell cholesterol 50% lymphocytes. In the milk, 80% are lymphocytes. As you know, also leukocyte is important as protective factors in our body. About prebiotics. Maybe you hear or read about prebiotics many times and we talk about it. It is oligosaccharide uh, that discovered in the breast milk more than 20 years back. And they discovered that uh, oligosaccharide that can promote the growth of small bowel, especially the uh, bacteria and nafia, the lactobacilli or bifidobacteria and different large. When, when we have this dose, I mean, oligosaccharide, that promote more, I mean, microbiota that promote to to uh, I mean, uh, protect uh, the small bowel and to prevent infection, decrease the infection, especially with some bacteria like E. coli, Salmonella, and Sigilla. Uh, in the acidic environment uh, is, is help the more, I mean, uh, oligosaccharides, large amount of oligosaccharides, uh, mainly it is, I mean, from the lactose, and uh, they are resistant to the digestion by our GI tract. يعني ما, ما يصير لها مشكلة مع الإنزام حقت الجي آي. Uh, they are fermented by gut flora, 
uh, and the uh, oligosaccharide protect, uh, I mean, work as prebiotic, and it will increase more uh, beneficial bacteria or bacteria and nafia when we get more oligosaccharide. They discover that in the breast milk up to 10 to 12 gram per liter in the breast milk, which now trying, they're trying to make same thing. This is another study, they compare breast milk with the formula. In the breast milk, the bifida bacteria is so high. No, it may be for example, Mr. Reed, yani, one drop of breast milk compared to one drop of, of formula, yani, uh, something cannot believe it's subhanAllah al different uh, immune components. This is uh, prebiotics or oligosaccharide only in the in the breast milk, not in the cow's milk. Whatever they mentioned that we have is not, not available only in the in the in the breast milk. And the, uh, the exclusive breast uh, has microbiota, as you mentioned, mainly the uh, bifidobacteria. This is uh, making as a difference uh, against the pathogen, uh, as we mentioned, made from different, I mean, uh, organism. And they are working as uh, improve the immune system in the newborn small bowel. Uh, what are the immunity benefits? There are different uh, benefits that we have immunoglobulins IgA, IgM, and Ig and IgD. They are protective against bacteria and virus infection. If it is factors, they promote formation of healthy bacterial colonization in infant and lower GI. Lactoferrin, as we mentioned, this is iron binding protein that reduces the available of iron bacteria in the gut. And lactoberizgudase, this is destroy the bacteria and lysozyme, this is kill, kills bacteria by destroying the cell wall. This is the main, you know, summarizing the uh, components that making the immunity of the, I mean, from the breast milk and helping the immunity of the uh, infant and the newborn and supporting also, I mean, uh, the immunity, especially in the small bowel and for the preterm will decrease uh, the incidence of neck, inshallah. So what's the impact of uh, immune factors or substance? That will enhance vaccines response to breastfeeding. They compare them. Uh, they did a study between uh, breast milk infant and bottle feed infant. They found that breastfeeding infant has more, uh, I mean, uh, effect for the vaccines. The antibodies will be more active and more abundant regarding, comparing mainly to the Bottle feed, uh, uh, bottle feed infant, especially with some uh, kind of vaccines, uh, influenza vaccine, polio virus vaccines, tetanus, diphtheria, lefteritis bacteria, and also an increase in interferon gamma after uh, measles, uh, mumps, and rubella, lefteritis virusi vaccination, and also the strong T cell after the BCG vaccines. So this is this is the important or the impact تأثير the immunity or the components of the breast milk on the immunity of our infant. This is the another uh, significant, as I mentioned, interleukin number six will increase production of uh, IgA, will enhance um, vagocytosis, then interleukin seven will be more and enhance T cell proliferation. Interleukin eight will be low, as I mentioned, should be decreased. This, should, this, this is, will be low and uh, not to, I mean, uh, decrease that one by activate, and when they are lowing, they will be activated neutrophils and anti-inflammatory uh, gamma, interferon gamma, and that will enhance the immunoglobulins IgG, IgA, and IgM. In conclusion, human milk play an uh, important role, I mean, important role or reversible load in nutrition and immunity. Breastfeeding is unique, as I mentioned, for the first six months of life. Uh, there the are many advantages, as you know, hygiene, no need to wash the bottle, no need to prepare it. It is, I mean, I a mean, uh, gift from God, from God, from Allah SWT, from our God, regarding that. Hadiyya, na'atbira hadiyya, wa minha rabbaniya, breast milk, that ready with the mothers, uh, and uh, no need to have preparation. And that breast milk, I mean, skin to skin, they have some emotional with the babies. The clinical evidence uh, provided for breast milk uh, strong protective against infectious gastroenteritis, uh, GI, I mean, uh, and also functional GI disorder regarding, uh, I mean, uh, vomiting, uh, regurgitation, uh, colic sometimes, 
constipation because uh, why in constipation? Because in the breast milk, uh, the prebiotics that we mentioned in the previous slide, with the prebiotics in, in, enhance and encourage more beneficial bacteria. Also, the prebiotics will make the stool is more soft, not hard to stool. We compare, we compare the, the, the breast milk to the bottle feeding uh, milk. Uh, the breast milk is, is more lighter and the, the stool will be soft and our babies, our neonates uh, I mean, and infants will not have suffering from constipation or uh, hard stool. It's very important. Uh, this is uh, uh, mainly uh, talk about immunity for Thank you very much. Any question? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Maad, for the great presentation and very informative. Um, if there is any question, please, can you just uh, put it in the chat area so we can ask Dr. Maal? We have five minutes uh, for the um, uh, next speaker. ممكن اسئله بالعربي دكتوره تسمحين لهم؟ اي ما في مشكله خليهم اي سؤال الحضور كرام اي احد عنده سؤال؟ ما في مو لازم <تصفيق> كان واضح ارجو انه يكون يا واضح مره يا ما مفهوم شيء ابد الله يبس <تصفيق> لا ان شاء الله يكونوا فاهموا يا رب It was very informative and excellent. Thank you very much, Dr. Mu'ad. Thank you very much, Dr. Mu'ad. Any evidence? Okay, there are some questions. Is there any evidence? Is there any evidence? Is there any evidence? في سؤال قبل معلش دكتورة لو سمحتي أيوة thank you great presentation is there any evidence to suggest mother having a higher content of good fats in her diet and improved breast milk content good question you know uh, actually يعني uh, maybe our colleague in Obigani they know better than us in pediatrics but what we noticed in our uh, ladies يعني they are deficient in all the components in the iron, vitamin D as well. But uh, this is this is good notice that good, I mean, suggestion that what about if we give the mothers, the pregnant ladies to eat more, I mean, uh, like fat, uh, يعني, is that going to help to have, for example, more good fat in, the, in their milk and that will, uh, for example, the Ercibofa will, I mean, help, for example, uh, for more, I mean, uh, cognition, for, I mean, vision and so on. But it needs to be, I mean, uh, studied. I have nothing, uh, nothing, I mean, uh, I mean, come during our reading regarding if we give mothers high, high, high fat. Uh, honestly, we need the mother just to, to eat properly. No need to have high fat. We need them, please, to eat a proper, I mean, I mean, food and diet during their pregnancy. You know, at least the vitamin D, at least the iron, you know, the hemoglobin for, for our ladies is, I don't know, but maybe my colleague can begin and our mid midwife they better than me. But what I noticed some 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 mothers, you know, their hemoglobin is 10, 11, 9, 8. And um, this is this is and hypochromic microcytic anemia. With them at least to have their stored iron is this proper and vitamin D and all the macro macronutrients and micronutrients. And this is good good, I mean, suggestion regarding studying the high fat for the mothers going to help. And and improve. I mean, the contents is good, good idea. Other question. علاقة الحليب بالمبر خالد جذعية. طبعا since 2007 من 2007 ما وجدوا إنه في حليب لهم في stem cell. وبعدين يعني في studies كثيرة خصوصا في أستراليا يحاولوا يشوفوا إنه كيف يستفيدوا من الخلايا الجذعية حقت الأم هل هذه ممكن تفيد في زراعة الأعضاء فيما بعد؟ 
لكن الى الان كلها ستاديز وكلها وجدوا انه ستيم سيلز سبحان الله العظيم يعني يعني اوف يو جو يعني 20 ييرز باك اول ما بداوا لو تلاحظوا مثلا شركات الحليب تحاول تعمل اشياء قريبه من حليب الام كانوا يسووا مثلا يقول ال سي بوب فرحانين فيها انهم اكتشفوا اللونج تشين بولي انسايت فاتي اسيد واكتشفوا دي اتش اي اللي موجود في حليب الام سبحان العظيم منذ خلق الله يعني الحليب في 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 صدر الام بعد ذلك اكتشفوا البريبيوتكس فافري تايم طبعا ممكن يعني بعد سنوات نكتشف اشياء اخرى في الخلايا الجذعيه او ستيم سيل تفيدهم وشغالين عليها حاليا لكن ممكن يعني اذا في شيء جديد نقدم في المحاضرات القادمه عنها هل هناك فرق بين البيت بالتغذيه التكميليه بعد ست اشهر تغذيه اربع طن يعطون اجوبه فاصل معي ممكن بعد خمس شهور بالنسبه للتغذيه التكميليه هي حقيقه حقيقه الافضل بعد ما يكمل الشهر الخامس يبدا الشهر السادس احنا عندنا مشكله في في الاعمار عند الاطفال لما تسالهم كم عمر ولدك تقول سته لا هو كمل خمسه وبدا السادس احنا نبدا نعطي شو اسمه ونعطي التكميلي الحقيقة أنه التكميلي مهم جدا ما يتعدى بعد الشهر السادس عشان بعض الأطفال بعد كده ما يقبل يأخذ فنخشى أن الأمهات يكون عندهم نقص الحديد فيتامين دال أنه يأثر على الطفل أنه ما يأخذ كمية كويسة من فيتامين دال وحديد لذلك مهم أنه يبدأ الغذاء التكميلي بعد ما يكمل الخامس يبدأ السادس زين مع استمرار حليب الأم طبعا بس مهم جدا أنه طبعا يقل فيتامين دال والحديد في حليب الام بعد الشهر السادس. شكرا سميره من الجزائر انت من الجزائر مشاركه معنا ولا في السعوديه؟ ما شاء الله واحده من الجزائر يعني وارهبي حقيقه. كريس بيرس ميكرايست وانتي بريست كوميتي دكتورة منال خرشيد مشكورة هي تقول انه تو هيب مادر تو كريس بيرس ميلك ذات از تو امتي بريست ميلك كومبليتلي ذير از ون انسر فور ذا ون هو اسك ابوت ذا فات ان ذا بريست ميلك دكتورة منال خرشيد ون اوف اور اكسبرت ان اي مين بريست ميلك كونسلتنت شي سيد وي هاف تو امتي ذا بريست كومبليتلي فروم ميلك by pumping uh, or hand expression uh, but not related to the mother diet. Thank you, Dr. Manal, for this uh, information. حياك الله أخت سميرة من الجزائر شرفتينا. شكرا دكتورة Manal على إجابتك. Thank you, Dr. Manal. She answered your question of, of uh, Mary. I wish Mary that, Dr. Manal Khurshid, she answered the question regarding your question that you have to uh, empty the breast milk completely that to help more more fat. اعطي الفرصه يا دكتوره رؤى لدكتوره نوره اعتقد اي دان ها اه اوكي عشان ما ناخذ وقت ما عندي مشكله ما عندي مشكله ممكن ات ذا اند ميبي وي كان اكسبت مور كويستشن ما عندي مشكله لو كنت بعيد دقوا علي جوال واكون قريب من جنب الكمبيوتر بس بطلع اصلي وارجع فاينلي اود لايك تو ثانكس ايفريبادي شكرا جزيلا لدكتوره رؤى شكرا جزيلا للاخوات في ال في السعودي ميديك ميد وايف جروب اي ام براود والله يقولها يعني بكل يعني اي ام سو براود فخور جدا جدا حقيقه ب يعني استمع للاخوات النشاط العلمي للجهود حقيقه اي ام سو براود واخت تغريد تقول بدات الجمعيه السعوديه الحمل كثير والاخوات والله متحمسات بس احنا وي ار جست ان سكراتش يعني فتحملونا وي تراينج اور بيست Uh, every member in the in the Saudi Breast Feeding Association trying their best, alhamdulillah, to to يعني help to share in the in the in the community. Uh, we promise, inshallah, with the time, inshallah, we still have a few months. And the pandemic of COVID, يعني برضو الظروف, but inshallah, we promise that inshallah everything will be fine. شكرا جزيلا everybody thanks everybody thanks everybody thank you so much for everybody who attending who's listening who's arranging who's conducting this this nice meeting overnight thanks so much thank you very much thank you very much Dr. Um, and uh, uh, the last uh, speaker but not the least uh, Dr. Noura uh, Hamad Al-Kharji uh, she is well known uh, um, uh, 
pediatric uh, consultant and lactation consultant. She, uh, her subspeciality is infant nutrition, particular lactation medicine. Uh, she works in National Guard uh, Health Affair in Riyadh. She is one of the breastfeeding advocates in Saudi Arabia. Uh, she's covering pediatric clinic on a regular basis on one lactation clinic weekly. Uh, she is um, supervisor of Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative and Family Medicine Department, a national assessor of Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative, uh, national trainers in breastfeeding counselor courses, uh, country coordinator of IBCLC, a member of National Breastfeeding Program, and member of National Infant Formula Pricing Committee. Uh, she's a member in many international associations, ILCA, IBFAN, uh, WABA, and ABM. Uh, with published research and breastfeeding, uh, she's an organizer and leader of many courses, symposia, and lactation field. Uh, Dr. Uh, Noura is one of the Saudi female leader in lactation medicine. So thank you, uh, Dr. Noura, if you can start the presentation. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Welcome all for this seminar. I would like to thank the midwifery group for celebrating this World Breastfeeding Week 2020 and build the bridge between Breastfeeding Association and midwifery group. I'm happy about this collaboration. Uh, the Breast uh, Feeding Association, the main aim uh, support and protect breastfeeding and work hardly on breastfeeding medicine and lactation academy. One duty of the scientific committee of a breastfeeding association is to establish establishment of lactation science degree and certificate for all healthcare providers in relation to uh, mothers and child health. As Dr. Huda Al-Hammami and Tagreed, uh, Dr. Tagreed and uh, Dr. Uh, Mo, all give us knowledge. So we need to uh, join the knowledge with skills. Uh, is it clear my voice or for all of you? Yes, clear, Doctor. I will start with the first slide. Uh, because of healthcare providers play a critical role in breastfeeding initiation, mainly in the hospital setting, and breastfeeding continuation, and uh, mainly in primary healthcare setting. While lack of support from healthcare providers uh, being identified as a major barrier to breastfeeding. So in most of the literature review, the first uh, barrier to breastfeeding untrained staff or unqualified staff. A degree in lactation consultant don't require time to achieve a degree. So it is, we'll take it simple. So no need for be free or no need to be released from your work to start study lactation medicine. In addition to your duty, in addition to your subspeciality, start to read, start to collect the resources of lactation. We will talk about uh, the certificate one by one. The first one, and the only internationally standardized, standardized lactation credential available uh, all over the world is the internationally board certified lactation consultant, IBCLC. What's the definition of this uh, degree? Uh, the IBCLC is a healthcare professional. He is uh, taking uh, experience in uh, the clinical management of a breastfeeding and lactation. The requirement for SIT uh, exam need 1,000 hours 
observing lactating mothers and working with families during lactation period. Any uh, staff can collect 10,000 hours in last five years from the daily work uh, from uh, breastfeeding clinic, if he has breastfeeding clinic, or, or uh, in the world around uh, during the daily work or uh, daily round in the postpartum world, uh, or from uh, social media, Twitter, Instagram. So any uh, advocate or any promotion to breastfeeding to lactating mothers, we can calculate. This 1,000 1, hours, who need for documentation? So only observe and uh, document your work, but no need for special documentation or any signature from any co-signature from any uh, higher authorities. In addition to this, the staff need to collect 90 hours this 90 hours, CME hours in lactation medicine, either from attending courses, breastfeeding courses, or attending conferences, or attend like this work, uh, workshop or seminar. Uh, if he collects 90 educational hours in lactation medicine and breastfeeding medicine in the last five years, then he uh, fit for uh, sitting exam. He can be certified every five years by either CME hours collected in five years or sit for exam. In the future, start from 2021, 20, this regu regulation will be changed and the policy will be updated. Uh, so no more uh, exam after for required for research. Who will attend this exam? Uh, dentist can uh, collect this uh, requirement and sit for exam. Dietitian, midwife, nurse, pharmacist, physiotherapist, physician, uh, speech therapist, uh, or can uh, attend uh, the lactation exam or uh, IB, uh, take this degree IBCLC. So I will invite all the participants today, all the, the who are listening to me, uh, collect hours, and after that can uh, use this email. You can capture this email, Saudi Arabia at iblc.org. Uh, the Saudi coordinator, my, my name, Dr. Noura al Kharji, the Saudi coordinator for this certificate. Uh, site of work, the staff uh, who get this qualification can work in hospitals, primary health care, private practice, breastfeeding clinic. I hope, I hope that there will be a breastfeeding clinic in each primary health care center and in each hospital setting. Inshallah, we will get this uh, dream soon. Uh, some lactation consultant can provide home visit. Uh, especially during the uh, COVID-19 situation. So uh, in last four months, uh, I did support at home because uh, the clinic, the breastfeeding clinic closed. The Allah will open next week. Second, advanced certified lactation professional ACLB. The staff will get 90 hours, or the qualified staff will get certi certification with 90 hours, CME hours, educational hours. Uh, then uh, the 90 hours uh, can, can get the certificate after final exam. The final exam only for evaluation, that he fit for this certificate or not. After he received this certificate, with title Advanced Certified Lactation Professional, he can become a, a IBCLC after uh, taking the IBCLE International Exam. So after complete this course, 
the longer duration course, about six month duration, uh, he can uh, sit for uh, the uh, exam uh, to become interna uh, international or lactation consultant, international lactation consultant. Uh, the qualified staff can help in common lactation situation and counseling lactating mothers. He can work in hospitals, outpatient sitting, private clinic, all healthcare uh, institutes. In Saudi Arabia, this course under umbrella of a breastfeeding association. Alhamdulillah, the Jamaat al Rada Tabiya, Akhadat al An, the Masoola An, the course that 90 hour course, uh, or the other name, laboratory course for. IBCLC or for lactation consulting. The uh, numbers of uh, lactation consultants nowadays, up to date in Saudi Arabia, uh, around 60. The third uh, certificate, CLC, Certified Lactation Counselor, other name. Uh, train the trainers course or 40 hour course. The staff has taken 40 hours in a breastfeeding management and passed a final presentation evaluation, no final exam. He need to uh, collect education hour after he received the certification. He need to collect every three years he need to take this course again. So the validity only three years. Uh, CLC is often a stepping stone, stepping stone to becoming an IBTLC. The qualified staff can arrange and conduct a 20 hour course for maternity staff. And this 20 hour course is a requirement for step two of baby friendly hospital initiative. So anyone qualified with this uh, CLC can conduct 20 hour course. He can provide breastfeeding counseling and management. Certified lactation educator, 20 hour course, uh, CL, CLE, certified lactation educators have taken a 20 hour lactation educational course. Their primary role to educate families interested in learning about breastfeeding. He can encourage families during lactation. Uh, even the, uh, the role of the doula can, can be present here with this course, with this certificate. The certified lactation educator offer information and education, but not a personal assessment or treatment plan. This is the only uh, course mandatory, should be mandatory for all maternity staff uh, who work with, in, uh, uh, with the mothers midwives, nurses, doctors working in maternity services, even the unit assistant, uh, and mandatory for uh, all staff working with children, so maternity or mother and child health, pediatric, ob dietitian, um, family, family physician, ER physician, uh, dietitian and health educator should be mandatory. This is the only mandatory course or uh, certification. Beer, beer counselor, other name support group. A breastfeeding uh, beer counselor is someone who offer uh, mother to mother support for breastfeeding. Uh, breastfeeding advocates, uh, other name, so either we can say support group, breastfeeding advocate, beer counselor, all that give us the same, uh, same name. This uh, certification accredited by various agencies and uh, different uh, associations. Uh, why? Because we need 
we need social association uh, to monitor their work. We need uh, a clinical uh, as, um, uh, health association to give the certification. So that's why this is multi-sectorial uh, certification. Most have completed around 20 hours as a basic or 40 hour advanced or breastfeed their own babies. This is a mandatory uh, for them or the women to be pulled in to take the certificate. We need uh, all of them uh, feed, breastfeed their uh, own babies for at least one year. They offer education and support, but don't offer assessment or medical advice. London course, the 120-hour uh, course. Uh, this course is uh, accredited by Royal College of Midwives. This is the only one as a special course. The comprehensive course of advocacy and practice in breastfeeding and lactation. First uh, outreach course done in Saudi Arabia and Middle East done in Saudi Arabia was uh, 2017 and led by King's Old University for Health Science Ministry of National Guard. Around uh, 34 experts uh, graduated from uh, this course. Fellowship program in human lactation. This is the new and updated uh, degree in or certificate in lactation or human lactation. The name of the uh, certificate, uh, Specialization in Lactation Consultancy. We have only two colleges uh, up to date to provide this fellowship program. The first one in USA, uh, the University Birthing Way College of Midwifery. Uh, duration, uh, 18 months. Uh, full-time or part-time. Uh, they can take it uh, uh, for uh, three semesters. Uh, each semester, six months in breastfeeding. Uh, section B, uh, clinical practice in providing care to breastfeeding families. And section C, education in special health science subjects. The admission requirements, uh, this is restricted for nursing and midwife only. Uh, here the website, if anyone interests, they can, you can copy this, the website and the email for uh, registration. This, uh, the first specialization being offered in lactation consultancy. وهذا ما شاء الله هذا حظ المدوائف تجري there is something specific for midwife. The other specialization in lactation consultant in Australia, uh, Mordosh uh, University, also this is a private university, duration of this fellowship uh, one, one and a half years is around 18 months, is similar to the one in USA full-time or part-time. Uh, anyone want to apply for this, here the website and the email. Up to my knowledge, both fellowship program up to date for national uh, uh, candidate. I didn't know if this open for international or not. Here's some picture for the resources. We have the program or lactation medicine uh, many textbooks uh, for lactation medicine and breastfeeding medicine. That's why it is crowded, but uh, I try to uh, show you uh, how, how the um, resources, a lot of resources we have. I received many questions, about, uh, what's the resources for the exam? So I can't answer this uh, question because I'm the coordinator. This is the health e-learning is the uh, official site for uh, human lactation medicine uh, online uh, 
and approved by uh, many uh, health association or uh, health disease association internationally. Here one example for uh, lactation medicine in UK. Uh, you can see that the same uh, certificate I presented before, International Board Certified Lactation cons Consultant, a breastfeeding counselor, bear support, they, they add a baby-friendly certificate. Anyone want this, I can send it by email for anyone who wants to go deep in these courses. Further information, Academy for Breastfeeding Medicine, you can go uh, this academy uh, um, only for physicians. Uh, I don't know if they accept nowadays the uh, nurses and midwives, I, uh, I don't know. Uh, infant and young child feeding, Moodle chapter for textbook. Uh, breastfeeding pediatrician by Victoria uh, Thoma uh, is uh, a good resources. Um, there is a lot of resources, the main websites for IBLC and ELCA, uh, so many associations related to uh, lactation uh, medicine. Thank you. Thank you Any very questions? much, uh, Dr. Noura, for uh, this uh, uh, great uh, presentation. Uh, I'm sure uh, many midwives uh, will benefit from the um, uh, type of um, uh, courses that is you. available for them. Um, so if there is any question for Dr. Uh, Noura, it's all for Saudi or anyone can take this course, Dr. Samah is asking. All for, for Saudi and Saudi. No, oh. no, any of this except about the 90 hours requirements. I think nowadays is open for, for Saudi and non Saudi. Uh, so, up to my knowledge, so no specific nationality. It's all open for all. Okay, great. Uh, is, is there any um, uh, recent? Um, courses going uh, to happen soon or no? Yeah, we are working hard on the online courses. The first one in mid-September, uh, we start. We will start a 20-hour course in King Saudi University Health Science and National Guard. Uh, about the uh, uh, hour uh, and uh, we will start in the uh, First November first two thousand twenty. Okay. So great. all the courses uh, will start up, uh, August, September, October. No courses. So we will start inshallah in November. Inshallah. Uh, any question? And the nearest next month there will be an exam for the lactation consultant. Uh, so 35 uh, will attend the exam, inshallah, from all nationalities. Inshallah. So, any question? Inshallah, all the will take the lactation uh, exam and we will be a lactation consultant in addition to the midwife certificate, inshallah. Okay, Dr. Manal, uh, she said, thank you, Dr. Noura, for your informative lecture. My question are these fellowship programs specifically directed to midwifery specialty? Yeah, <laughs> this is a great thing for the mid midwifery and nursing. They need baccalaureate, they require baccalaureate for nursing or midwives. For physician, not allowed. Okay. Thank uh, you. Uh, I'm happy that there is something uh, that's specialized. Uh, so we hope that there's uh, be more, more and more advanced. No more questions? 
Um, any more questions? Yeah, we have five you. minutes. We have yeah, only five out. minutes. Uh, and I'm really happy that we are on time. Uh, we started on time and we're finishing on time. So we have five more, more minutes for uh, if you want to ask any uh, the other speaker or you want to ask Dr. Noura, just drop your question in the chat area, please. If you allow me, I just want to say hi, Dr. Noura. Kif halik nawartina, wallah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm very happy, Dr. Mouad. للنشاط ومشكورة التعاون يعني جدا جدا سعيدين يعني الحدث اليوم يعني نرفع لكم تحية سلام ونرفع لكم تحية تقدير وإعجاب نشاطكم وإن شاء الله من هذا وأكثر وأفضل بإذن الله بإذن الله وإحنا جدا جدا سعيدين بأنه يعني جمعية الرضاعة الطبيعية إن هي ما شاء الله تبدأ وبقوة يعني صح أخذت وقت عشان تصير الجمعية بس ما شاء الله تبارك الله الأكتيفيتي يعني واضحة يعني والنشاط وما شاء الله كل يعني السبيكر very well uh, يعني, uh, uh, knowledgeable about the breastfeeding and you're trying to um, uh, increase the awareness for the public. Uh, we are uh, Saudi Medufari group. Uh, we are mainly to educate and uh, increase the awareness for the midwives. So I think it's really nice that we can collaborate and this is the first collaboration between us and you. And inshallah, in future, we have more collaboration and uh, in, in real life, <laughs> not virtual collaboration. Okay. Um, is it next week or the week after you open your breastfeeding clinic? This week, this, this coming week. Okay, we don't have certificate for today, Mona. Uh, this is uh, uh, just uh, to update you with all the information for breastfeeding. Um, maybe uh, in future we will have um, uh, virtual uh, conferences that have uh, certificates. Um, thank you, Dr. Noura. Arabic speaker will be a barrier to complete CLC. Certificate and apply here. Yeah, up to date is difficult in Arabic language. It's not yet. There is there is the plan to be in Arabic. Not yet. Now here, but you're saying that non-Arabic speaker will be a barrier. اللي هم ما يتكلموا عربي ممكن يكملوا ال CLC certificate. Yes. You mean? Because all in English nowadays. Yeah. Courses. No Arabic Okay, so it's in English. All the preparatory course in English and all the resources in English. And uh, we hope that maybe uh, next two years there will be Arabic uh, course for the Arabic speaker. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending this. Um, and uh, we uh, we like to uh, to say uh, goodbye to uh, all the speaker and the presenter. Um, we, uh, it's nine o'clock now. And salam uh, alaikum wa rahmatullah. Like salam. Ahlaw sahla. أهلا وسهلا فيكم أشكر الجميع والله على هالجهود وهالتضافر وهالتعاون وإن شاء الله من ذو أكثر هذه البداية نبغى تصير أسرع وأكثر والله الحمد شاكرين لكم والله التجاوب والتعاون والله يوفقنا وياكم إلى كل خير آمين بإذن الله وشكرا لكم جميعا شكرا جزيلا طبعا الشيخ عبد الحميدي هو رئيس جمعية الرضاعة الطبيعية له الفضل, بعد له, له الفضل بعد الله تعالى في إنشاء هذه الجمعية بعد صبر طويل uh, this, is, uh, this is our president of the Saudi Pediatric Association uh, Mr. Abdelaziz Al-Hamidi who have great effort to uh, establish this uh, association Alhamdulillah finally 
uh, he's uh, I mean uh, willing to uh, I mean attend and share us all the activities. فمشكور الشيخ عبد العزيز على حضورك ودعمك جزاك الله خير. الفضل آه كله للجميع ولكم وتعاونكم. رؤى وزميلاتنا. الله يعطيك العافيه باذن الله هذه البدايه هذه دك... البدايه زي ما قال دكتور رؤى باذن الله تعالى بدايه ان شاء الله والخير قادم باذن الله تعالى زي ما قال دكتور رؤى يعني فيزيكالي وليس ان شاء الله فيرتشوال نشوف مع بعض. ان شاء الله ان شاء الله. جزاك الله خير شيخ شكرا دكتور رؤى تحياتنا للجميع شكرا جزيلا واحنا عندنا باذن الله يعني اتس نايس تو اناونس ان نوفمبر ميبي نوت ذا ديت ار نوت يت اناونس بت ات ذا اند اوف نوفمبر وي ويل اناونس اور انوال جنرال ميتنج ذات وي دو افري يير بت ذس يير ويل بي اون لاين سو اني ون وي ويل اوبن ذا كول اوف ابستراكت anyone is uh, uh, happy to present their research or poster or anything, we will, uh, inshallah, we will publish the link for uh, submitting the abstract uh, soon. So just be tuned. Inshallah, shukran. Bidin Allah ta'ala. Shukran jazeen. Barakallah fiikum. Atikum al-afi. Allah atikum al-afi, doktor. Allah atikum al-afi. Shukran. Shukran jazeen. Thank you everybody. Atikum al-afi. Shukran li, hatta min kharaj al-Sudan, nashkurhum. Nguhum merci ahli jazar u gairhum, yani. الله يسلمك يلا شكرا